Welcome to the InDesign first tutorial. <clears throat> We're going to take a quick look at the workspace. The very first thing I did when I opened up InDesign, this window comes up here with some options and I clicked on create a new document. You can also create books and other uh, library documents in there. There's also a community um, kind of chat room, user group, uh, message board type thing where you can go and get information and also some plugins and other things that you can add to InDesign. So when I open up new document, I get this window here and there's just a few things that we'll go over. The intent is to print. Uh, you can also do a web design and digital publishing that you will not print. We're going to choose print. It's a fairly high quality um, document that you'll end up with. Uh, you can choose the number of pages, so I'm going to choose, let's go with five, uh, starting at page one. I can choose my paper uh, size as well, so you've got your typical defaults and then of course your custom. Um, InDesign uses picas, so right now I'm at 51 picas by 66 picas, and that's eight and a half by 11 inches. And my orientation, well I can do portrait or landscape. Um, I can choose columns if I want, and then I can also adjust my margins, or I'm going to leave them at three picas. It's kind of the standard typical. Um, I can change them all at once. Or if I check this box here, which is a very common box in InDesign, if I uncheck that or break the link, then I can change one at a time to whatever it is that I want. Picas are broken up into 12 parts, and so half a pica is six points there. The last thing we'll take a look at is facing pages. And facing pages, uh, if you ch have that checked, what it will do is it will put two pages on one panel. So you can look at two pages at the same time. If I uncheck that, it will only put one um, page per panel. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. So I'm going to click OK and it will create the document. Take a moment, it's a fairly big piece of software. So there's my portrait and here are my facing pages. So if you don't want facing pages, then what you can do is go to File and Document Setup. It will take you back to a simplified window here where I can change the orientation. I can uncheck facing pages. Um, more options are here, of course. Um, we won't worry about those at the moment and then I click OK and it will adjust my document for me. There's your typical file uh, edit <clears throat> menu up here. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of those in this tutorial but we'll go there a few times to look at other things as well. But it has all the, the usual um, save, copy, paste type things and also some InDesign specific ones. What I will show you is this um, automatic zoom level uh, so I can zoom way in to 1200%, I can zoom way out to 12.5%, so I can see my whole document. Um, around 60-75% gives you a full page view anywhere in there. Uh, this window here <coughs> allows you to see certain things like the rulers, the guides, the smart guides, uh, baseline grid, those kinds of things and I can check those or uncheck those and then I will not see them. So if I want to hide my rulers, for whatever reason I can do that. Normally you keep them on because you use guidelines a fair bit. So there's my baseline grid. It looks like line paper and it just uh, basically sections off the whole document into um, different same height grid lines. The next one over allows for different views. So for example, uh, the two that I will, we will use mainly are normal and preview. So if I want to see my, what my document looks like without the margins and guidelines that I can drag in. So for example, I'll just quickly drag in a guideline here. And then I can go to preview to see what it will look like when I print my document without those. Uh, when I have something selected, I will see it. So you notice that one guideline stayed 
uh, visible for a while and that's because when I click on it I select it and it allows me to move it or delete it and so when I go to preview it will still stay there until I click or deselect it. This allows you to see more than one document when I have more than one document open. I currently only have one uh, but if you have three or four documents open you can choose different views to see all the documents at the same time or different parts of it anyhow. On the left we have all the different tools that we'll use and I'll just remove that it's a different piece of software and so uh, some of the drawing tools, the editing tools, the text tool, drawing shapes and picture frames and pen and pencil tool, um, gradient and so on. So we'll take a look at some of those tools over the tutorials. For each tool there's a tool options bar up at the top that allows you to uh, modify that tool. So if I go to the text tool for example I can choose my font, my font size and all bunch of different settings uh, that are up there as well. This of course is my document and let's go back to the normal view. Um, we have this big panel here that allows me to work outside uh, the document and then drag things in if I want to do that. Um, gives me more space and these scroll bars of course will go back and forth. Uh, so that's the tool options bar. Um, you've got the ability to jump from page to page down here. So right now I'm on page one. I can click on this and go to page two or this button here and go to the last page and of course the first page. Over on the right we have all these different palettes and you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of them and this is um, most of the ones that typically you would use when you're creating a document. So what this is called is your workspace and if you want to change your workspace you go to window and um, I can uh, go to my workspace and I have all these different uh, basically setups in the workspace that I can use so if I'm looking for just the bare minimum what I would need to create a document I would go to essentials and it would reorganize my workspace into this format give me a big view of my document so I can zoom fairly far in and then uh, it would show me some of these different palettes like my swatches and my line styles and so on. Uh, I can go to say advanced and it will give me more. You can see I have more here and then if I want to call up windows that I generally don't have what I can do is go to my say my styles and say I want character styles. I can click on that Oh, it's already open. Sorry. Let's try a different one. So I have character and paragraph. Let's go to window, styles, and object styles. It's there as well. Well, I should really pay attention. So you'll notice, you'll obviously see that those open up. So if I, uh, let's say I have layers, output. So say if I'm, I'm doing a pre-flight where I'm pack, packaging up to send to it a uh, publisher, um, I can open that up. It'll open it up here in a window, but if I want to just drop it into here, I can place it there and then just click on it to open it up so it won't clutter up my desktop. And so there's all these different ones that you can open up and use. Uh, so for example, do I have tables? I do not have tables. So I'll open up the tables one and I can drag that there and have it um, ready and available by the click of a button so I can format and create my tables. So that's um, one other workspace that we'll take a look at and you can just play around and choose the ones that you want. So you can look at all the new stuff interact for PDFs. If you just are doing digital publishing or a book, you can do that. If you ever lose stuff, all you have to do is go to the reset button and I click on that and it will reset it to what I had originally, the default. So if you lose things, just go to reset and that happens once in a while. In order to open and close things, you can click on this double arrow here and this double arrow here it will open up all of them at once and then you can click on these tabs to go into the hidden ones so 
So if I'm looking for strokes or gradient, I can do that. So that's your basic workspace. Um, what we'll do is take a look at how guidelines work and what they're used for. And then we'll take a look at adding in some different elements to create a publishing document.